Greetings, Commander. Our objective indicates 30 potential targets, but with the bonus games at the end, we have a total of 40 strategy games on the way, including tons of RTS, 4Xs, and grand strategies. Hello, my name is GamerZack. I've been making these kind of list videos for almost a decade now, and welcome to my 30 upcoming PC strategy games in 2022 and 2023 list. Now, we've all longed for the golden age of strategy games of the past, but in recent times, the genre has had a pretty good showing. Let's have a look at what's approaching from the horizon. I've spent a lot of time on this, so if you do appreciate what you see here, please do like, subscribe, and share the video with your strategy communities, as it really does keep this channel marching along and these videos being made. Also, be sure to vote on your favorite game from the list over at gamerzack.com slash listhub. Extra games, bonus behind the scenes, and a Discord community you can join are all there, or follow on Twitter to reach me directly. You can also subscribe to this channel for more like these lists, looks at new games, and nostalgic gaming content. And follow on Twitch to see me live. Alright, now let's get started. Opening the gates with Dust Front from RTS Demon. This is an RTS inspired by Red Alert, Dawn of War, and the Command and Conquer series. And it can act it's actually calling itself a single-player RTS with roguelike elements, high replayability in a diesel punk world ravaged by thousands of years of war. What this game is promising, first of all, is this unique graphic style, which is very grim, dark, but actually kind of nice and high quality if you actually look at it. Gameplay features are promising classic frantic and tactical RTS gameplay, a global map with management of territories and resources, a research tree to upgrade your army and economy, and a roster building system like in a cardboard game. Now, this is a very indie development, which is it doesn't have a lot of funding, doesn't have a lot of backing, but I think just looking at what it is, this deserves a bit more attention than it's getting. I do really hope that this turns out to be something very, very solid. But one thing we can check out now is their previous sort of indie game release called Panzer Shoot. It's a game that is pretty much a kind of tech demo alpha for Dust Front. And it's got a similar style, but it's not an RTS, but it's actually kind of nice. So you can go ahead and check out Panzer Shoot now, and we can have hopefully high hopes for Dust Front. And then we go to a new game in an old series, Starship Troopers Terran Command by the Artistocrats. This is a game that really reminds me of the old Starship Troopers game called Starship Troopers Terran Ascendancy, which I played way back in, what's the year, 2000? Like 21, 22 years ago? And that was kind of a tactical walk around, kill bugs sort of thing. But this one is a bit more advanced uh, with base building and all of that. In Starship Troopers Terran Command, you take command of mobile infantry and do your part against the war against the arachnid threat to ensure that human civilization, not insects, dominates the galaxy. Now and always. What this game is promising is a story campaign, tactics and numbers, units and abilities, and some other key features are, well, supposedly an immersive storyline, dozens of unique unit types, terrain elevation, true line of sight, and true line of fire. Now, that, that's actually kind of interesting with how it's working. Basically, sh units can't shoot through each other unless one has the high ground. And you know me, I'm a big fan of terrain elevation and high ground. You'll also be able to manage a fleet of dropships to expand your base infrastructure as you capture strategic positions to strengthen your forces and unlock new weaponry. So this is one of those more tactical RTSs, which is more akin to the Company of Heroes style gameplay, where you do have a base, and there is base building, but it's a little bit more on the light side, whereas the tactical units moving around and all of that that's actually something that's that's more of the focus and how these units and their special abilities play into the actual combat mechanics is where the key features are. Now I have played a little bit of this one and in, in its sort of demo state 
a couple missions and all of that. And it's actually kind of solid so far. It's it's feeling good. But uh, looking at a uh, March 2022 release date, it's got a few months to polish things up and finish things off. And then hopefully we can get a really good Starship Troopers game with Starship Troopers Terran Command. Next we go Cyberpunk with Neuro Slicers by Dream Harvest. This is a post-cyberpunk strategy game combining solo, cooperative and competitive PvP and PvPVE gameplay into a narrative-driven world. Go on an epic journey to discover the secrets of the Neuronet, the city and the factions fighting for its control. Customize, adapt and defeat. You are Neuro Slicers. Now this is an interesting and unique looking strategy game that's it's not quite the same as the others on this list. It's sort of a tile based RTS thing and you'll be able to customize your playstyle as you craft and level up customizable node techs, scripts and mods to grow your power as you go through an ongoing narrative campaign. Some of the big features being offered here are that this is supposed to be a RTS that focuses on macro over micro. So it's not going to be the one with the fastest APM to win the battle. And true customization of units and buildings and powers, that is something that is kind of nice if it's done well, but sometimes it just gets a bit too much to handle for me. You know, I've, I'm not always a fan of customizing units in strategy games. But maybe if some of the focus is taken off other things, it, it would give you time and mental capacity to, to handle that. Unless you are already a fan of customization of units in strategy games. A fully voiced and diverse cast of NPCs to build relationships with, each with their own set of systems, goals and opportunities, is also going to be part of that narrative campaign. And it's actually stating to be eSports ready for competitive PvP and truly balanced gameplay. Now that is a big, it's a big thing. You know, eSports ready, well, it's not easy to become an eSport. So that's ambitious of Neuro Slicers. So we'll see if this is actually something that can be pulled off. But uh, the release date for now is to be confirmed. So it's unclear exactly when it's going to be. Most likely we'll know more in 2022 and I would expect a game like this in its current state to be released sometime either late 2022 or into 2023. Staying with the sci-fi alien -y RTSs, we've got Module War by Biohex Games. This is a weird one. Grow, split, survive. Module War is a unique take on real-time strategy where you take control of a Modu, an alien creature with the ability to grow different organs, split them up, merge them together, and basically your base is your units, are your units. It, you start with a center core and then you have to harvest resources and you basically grow tiles or pieces onto this core. And then these, these pieces can split off into their own units. So you can have a unit which is like five shooter bits and three bitey bits. And it's, it's very interesting. And of course, the larger the pieces, the slower it moves. And there's sort of adjacency bonuses with poison effects and, and defenses. And it it's quite interesting and, and unique and different here, right? So. In terms of gameplay, it is offering online PvP with two to four players in a match. And there is also a story and a campaign mode. And one interesting thing in, in my uh, little plays of Module War so far is that it's got a kind of that cheesy live action acting stuff going on, kind of like from Command and & Conquer. And I, I kind of like it, it kind of works. But yeah, anyway, th this game is... It has been around for a couple years and it's going into early access towards the end of 2021 and looking to be in early access for 6 to 12 months. So if it sticks to schedule, it'll be playable end of 2021 and should get a full release in 2022. Though, you know, considering how this is more of an indie development, 
let's just expect it to come in 2023 and be pleasantly surprised if it stays on time. At the start of Early Access, it's going to have four story campaign levels, ten different units, well, organs to build. I guess pieces? I don't know what they're called. Six different NPC creatures to fight against besides your enemies' armies. Multiplayer mode will be implemented and a monster arena with skirmish mode. So, Early Access is kicking off with quite a decent amount of content and we'll see how it goes over the next year for Module War and if it'll be able to adapt through Early Access. Now, staying sci-fi, but going on to a much larger scale with Sanctuary by Enhearten Media. Sanctuary is this giant real-time strategy game set in the far future on a Dyson Sphere. Three factions vie for power on what could be a prosperous utopia, but instead is a warring hellscape. You take command of thousands of units on a vibrant battlefield, as you guide your armies to their ultimate victory or final defeat. This is a game where every ballistic is simulated in real time and you're looking at thousands of, well, up to a thousand units under your direct control on maps as big as 40 by 40 kilometers. It's a, one of the RTS that focuses on macro over micro because, you know, you, you, you're not going to be microing thousands of units, are you? <laughs> so it, it's a big game where you're zooming in and out, overlooking a huge battlefield and trying to sort of change the tide in a much more tide sense, where, where you're thinking of these giant waves of armies crashing against each other from flying units, ground units and, and all sorts of things. You know, you can think Zero K or Supreme Commander, that sort of thing. But it has to be said, right now, although development seems to be progressing well, there's uh, a long way to go, I think, for this one. Especially considering their goals of bringing a total of 10,000 units with simulated projectiles running across the net for eight players in a single match. That's, that's a lot. The development started in September of 2020, so it's been going for about a year at this point. And it, it says you can expect big announcements in 2022. They are also aiming to have a beta at the start of 2023. So we'll be able to know if uh, Sanctuary is going to do well about then. There will notably be a Kickstarter in the second half of 2022, so there is at least a date for that. And if that succeeds, they're looking at a fully-fledged naval army, rich campaign, AI, complex AI, 25 crafted maps, lots of replay systems and stuff like that, and just picture-in-picture -picture notifications, Linux support, and full modding and mapping support. So, we'll have to see how this does, because there is some competition for this, and let's go have a look at the competition for Sanctuary. This is one that's showing a lot of promise and we first looked at it last year. It's called Beyond All Reason by BAR Team. This is calling itself the ultimate real-time strategy game and it's pursuing the ideals of Cave Dog's Total Annihilation. It says it's a real-time strategy redefined. Every unit, projectile and explosion simulated in real time. Now, this does sound a lot like uh, the previous game, but this one's been going for quite a while. And development seems to be a little bit further along. Skill and realism are a focus and, you know, simulating all of this, all the projectiles on thousands of units can be very, very difficult. And this one does have a big focus on the importance of terrain, so, you know, high ground and low grounds and all of that. No two maps will play the same as you'll have to take advantage of things and nuclear warfare can totally redefine the rules of a game because terrain matters less when you just have giant explosions. Before that though, you'll need to utilize 10 different unit classes, including experimental giant units, to work your way to victory. So far, they're boasting 394 units, all unique with a purpose, which sounds a bit ambitious. 
And, you know, personally, I can see the benefit of having so many units, but it can also be rather overwhelming and confusing and hard to grasp. So it might take some time getting used to how all of this works, but it does lead to infinite possible tactics. But how you balance all of that, well, I'll leave that to developers. Generally, this has been going pretty well. They're already having tournaments. They're developing new maps and new units and new buildings and changing how all of that works. And visually, it, it seems to have come a long way as well because things look pretty good. So there's a lot going on and it's a, making it a good one to keep an eye on if you so desire. Though there's no clear release date or release window or anything like that. So this could be in development for quite some time. But it is playable now, so you can go check it out. And that's beyond all reason. Alright, now I think we have a trend alert in the strategy genre with Siege Defense RTS. All inspired by They Are Billions and the success of that. Starting with Alien Marauder by Vexen Studio. Alien Marauder is a real-time strategy game with survival and confrontation. You'll be a leader on a treacherous alien planet. Build and defend your base to survive against Vexen waves. Which, uh, this one seems rather action-packed, by the way, uh, compared to some of the other ones in this section. There's going to be survival mode here. You'll land on a completely randomly generated map. And you have to build a base that can defend against all of these incoming waves. There's defensive mode, where you only gain resources by killing Vexens. And you increase your base defense and army strength by gaining a random high-tech chip bonuses for each successful wave. There's a hero system. And this game is boasting being able to handle at least 10,000 combat units simultaneously and up to 100,000 units on the same screen. They say they are committed to the optimization of performance and efficiency, and as far as possible, they can make you experience these spectacular war scenes. Now that, that is very, very ambitious, and you know, the footage so far they're showing off seems pretty good, although even in their official footage there are laggy scenes, so they're gonna have to put a lot of optimization and development into this. Like, thousands of units, okay. Tens of thousands of units, that's pretty ambitious. A hundred thousand units, well, we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. Alien Marauder is looking at an early access release in 2021 sometime, which hopefully that's soon because we're almost at the end of the year here. And they're planning to stay in early access for about a year, which is not a long time. But if the game is already well on its way, I suppose they could do it. So we can expect a full release in 2022. But you know, this subgenre of siege defense, there's a lot of competition. So let's see what else this section has in store besides Alien Marauder. Finally moving away from sci-fi, but still in the Siege Defense, it's Age of Darkness a Final Stand by Playside. This is a fantasy survival RTS where you must illuminate, build and defend humanity's last bastion against the horde of nightmares. Set in the remnants of a kingdom consumed by a deadly fog, you decide, will you hide in the light or take back your world? This is a game that's already in early access, uh, entered early access towards the end of 2021, with a reasonable amount of very positive reviews. And the publisher is Team 17, which is known for being pretty good at publishing all sorts of games. So, so it's got some good legs to stand on here. Now, visually, this game actually looks really nice. Like just looking at the footage, it's got this dark, grim sort of look, and it's I mean, it's pretty good looking. And I think knowing these are, they are billions inspired, you can expect the basics of the gameplay being building, gathering resources, and fighting in a desperate last stand against waves of enemies. But in this particular one, you're actually like lighting up the fog, you know, when, when it's fog of war, but this is, it's literally fog that you're, you're illuminating to remove from the map. Now, the features this one is promising is Swarm Tech, which is allowing for over 70,000 swarming AI units on screen at any time. These games seem to be competing for how many units they can get on screen, but I'd like to clarify right here. 
the total number of units is impressive, but it's not necessarily the most important thing. But it's it's nice, the more the better, you know, as long as computers can run it. Now against these 70,000 swarming AI units, you're going to be building the fences. There's day and night transitions, so expand by day, hunt by night. There's unique heroes to level up and micromanage to gain an edge against the dark. There's this living death fog system that grows and recoils from the light. Randomized malices and blessings, so there's sort of a little bit of RNG to make things interesting. A multifaceted skill tree system for your units to progress through. And there are these wandering elite nightmares that might ambush your party, but also drop some precious dark essence that you kind of want. And basically, lots of unique and special nightmare units, including spitters, crushers, and wraiths. So there's a lot going on here. It looks good, it seems to play well, it's got a nice theme, it's in early access now, with very positive reviews. And they're saying it's staying in early access for at least one year, which means it could probably be longer, as, you know, whenever they say at least, it, it's almost always longer. Very rarely it's shorter, and very rarely it's on time. So we can expect this to be pretty well developed in a year's time, towards the end of 2022, and I can see a full release in 2023 for something like this. It's published, it's got a good start, and I can see it going well. So you can go ahead and check out Age of Darkness Final Stand and see if it's a nice change from They Are Billions. Staying in the siege defense area, still fantasy, we've got Orc War Chief Strategy City Builder by G Devs and Shift Games. Now, I'm just gonna say here, right from the start, once you start SEOing your, your, the title of your game, I already get a little bit suspicious about how well this is gonna be. Like putting Strategy City Builder right in the title, that, that you're pushing the SEO a bit here. Like, Maybe, like, uh, I don't know, it, it just gets me. Anyway, this game, from what we've seen, it looks pretty good, uh, like the visually graphics. Uh, you are an orc war chief and you're here to fight for survival of your race. You rebuild your village and train your warriors, gather resources, craft weapons, raise your war banners and gather the horde as you hold off waves of enemies. Raiding human settlements and ambushing their caravans can increase your fear and builds your name as a true war chief. And you gotta incite fear among your enemies to gather the support necessary for your horde. But as your settlement grows, you become a target yourself and humans would want to attack and raid you. So prepare your defenses and train your warriors well. So this one, it looks interesting, sounds interesting, and it's uh, probably gonna be okay, but uh, there's no planned release window or roadmap or anything like that. And I would just be a little bit cautious with this one. You, you can keep an eye on it, but I'm not gonna make any big calls until I actually see it in action. Because, as I mentioned, once you like, SEOing the title is a bit of a shady move in my books. And I'd like this to be done well enough where we just know it as Orc War Chief. So if this game does continue development, we'll probably come back to this in a year or so. Surviving more waves. We have Diplomacy is Not an Option by Dor407. You were born a feudal lord. Sounds good, but you're bored of hunting, executions and tournaments, even of feasts and beautiful maidens. The only dream left your castle surrounded by hordes of enemies. The story here is basically you are a lord, an innocent lord, which, you know, everyone hates for no reason. They all just come in waves and droves to try and kill you. This one is pretty interesting. I've tried out the demo and been watching this for a little while. And this is sort of like They Are Billions, but one, medieval, but also a much bigger focus on the base building fortress management aspect of it. It's sort of like they are billions plus stronghold, if you can imagine that. You do build walls, you build houses, you build fountains, and you have to stave off starvation and disease. And this one I thought was going pretty expectedly, but as the game went on, more and more interesting things opened up to us. There's magic spells where you can summon spirit warriors or laser beams down from the skies. 
And then, you know, with every friendly dead body, every soldier that dies, it leaves a corpse on the ground, which you do have to bury, because if you don't, not only do they start spreading disease and your people die and you make more corpses, but they actually do rise to become zombies. So if you leave your soldiers dead on the ground for too long, they just become enemies. And it, this started opening up a lot of interesting things. And that was all just in the demo. So, so far, this is looking pretty good. It's going into early access in January of 2022, and it is promising to fully release in 2022. So as long as they stick to that schedule, we'll be able to see it enter early access and complete itself over the next year. So personally, I am looking forward to seeing how this develops. And if you like the look of it, you can check it out relatively soon or just check out the demo on Steam for diplomacy is not an option. Okay, now for the final Siege Defense RTS. It's called Big Castled by Mana Potion Studios. This is a game that's about building and defending your castle from sieges in a fantasy world. Okay, uh, the description sounds like many of the other games, but this one has made its mark. Quite a lot of people have played this. It's in early access already with thousands of very positive reviews, so people like this. Basically, you build your castle, you manage resources, train an army, survive a siege, and you explore an ancient conflict between light and dark. So it's in early access right now, and they say it's hard to tell for how long, but they say around one to two years. So if they do manage to stick to that, then it's gonna be a 2022 or 2023 release, mainly because they're developing quite a lot of things, including a campaign, adding more magic, including more heroes and neutrals, more units and buildings, more stuff in the world generator, more enemies and seasons. But the very positive reviews aren't for nothing. You can already build and manage your castle by day and defend it by night. There's already 26 different buildings and seven resources. Four types of player units, four types of enemy units, and four types of enemy siege weapons. So this one, although maybe not as visually stunning as some of the other games in the siege defense subgenre, does seem to be one of the more popular ones already, and it's doing well. So now let's move out of the siege defense uh, section. The castled is very good and all. Let's, let's see what's next. Okay, now into a section that's a personal favorite, it's pixel art. Beginning with The Fertile Crescent by Wield Interactive. This is a classic base building RTS inspired by the struggles of growth, advancement and conquest in the cradle of civilization. At first glance, this sort of looks like a pixel art Age of Empires 1 sort of thing, but it's more than that. You are actually building up a civilization here and there's hunger and starvation and you got to collect these resources. So it's sort of like, I'm not sure if I was the only one who did this, but you ever played Age of Empires 1 as sort of a survival game where you build up a, a little village and you collect food and resources and try to survive, you know, even though that wasn't really part of the game. This is sort of like that. It's sort of like a survival Age of Empires 1 with pixel art. And it's actually kind of great. It's coming a long way as well. It's got a publisher now and everything. Offering multiple strategic options from the beginning, there are multiple paths to victory. Also, the fertility mechanic is very important. Food is the foundation of every successful village in this game. You know, the bigger your population, the more mouths you have to feed. So you could just lose, like without even meeting your enemy if you mismanage your civilization. You will be advancing your village as well, with new techs and upgrades and all of that, which is going to be important. And this is a competitive RTS where you can play online with up to four players. The AI can be quite challenging already, but real players are available. Now, this is still probably a long way off. Planned release date is TBA, but it's been in sort of this uh, open free-to-play development on Itch.io for quite some time. But it's coming to Steam and there's a number of uh, improvements and upgrades to the game coming, which are not 100% shown off yet, but I think over the next year we're going to be seeing a lot more changes and steps forward for the Fertile Crescent, and I'm excited to see where this goes. 
continuing the pixel art RDS, this time in a more modern setting, with Retro Commander by Noble Master. This is a 4x post-apocalyptic real-time strategy war game, where you take command and fight it out in a world where a cataclysmic timeline has transpired. Wage wars solo against the AI or take on your gaming comrades in cross-platform multiplayer matches. Or you could go co-op and fight together versus the AI. There is base building, exploration, and expansion as expected in an RTS. And there's a deep campaign with a storyline about humanity after the cataclysmic event. Plenty of troops including infantry, tanks, jets, helicopters, airships, warships, submarines, and more and different factions, each with their own technologies, including stealth, lasers, shields, and so on. Types of missions include elimination, survival, capture the flag, and defense. And as a bonus, there's day-night cycles, rain, wind, and solar flare activity. Map editor included, high scores and player statistics, ELO rankings in competitive multiplayer, and the whole pixel art aesthetic. It looks kind of cutesy, but also kind of nice. It, it's, it's an interesting approach. So, Retro Commander is very reminiscent of old-school RTS with a lot going for it. And there is a demo on Steam that you can check out at the time of making this video anyway. And it's looking to enter early access. Well, it actually says probably 2021. So let, let's just assume 2022. Uh, but also, it does say it should be in early access for 4 to 12 months. So it'll take up to a year hopefully, to finish the game once that starts. But most things should be implemented at the start of Early Access. Mainly it's uh, fixing bugs, adding missing features, finishing off campaign scenarios, and things like Steam achievements, and some documentations on how to do modding. So overall, Retro Commander, what it says, seems to be completing up uh, quite nicely. It'll be entering Early Access, and it should, hopefully, be a short trip to full release, as promised. Meanwhile, let's go check out another pixel art game, because I love them. This one's called Lords of Solgrund by Coltira. This one says you gotta take care of your people's needs and wants, build a peaceful town, and then let it burn because you forgot to recruit soldiers and defend yourselves. Totally don't relate to that one. This one looks a lot like Knights and Merchants, I guess. It, it's a pixel art, medieval, sim-based town building warfare RTS thing, which has multiple biomes to build in, a soldier morality system, weather effects, town fires, and all sorts of things like that. Visually, it actually looks really nice. It, it, it's sort of this retro pixel art style, and it's it's got a very strong art direction, which is very reminiscent. It, it's, it's Knights and Merchants, isn't it? <laughs> it's clearly inspired by that, but we've got new things like jester festivals, unique events that happen, research for upgrades, and this whole economy system with resources and taxes, mining gold and smelting it. So basically, there's a lot here. Now, the confusing and sort of problematic thing I have here is that it's all on IndieDB and development is a bit hard to follow. There's no particular Steam page or official website or anything like that right now. So it does seem like a very interesting project. There's a trailer which you can see the gameplay footage on screen right now. And it does very much remind me of Knights and Merchants at the time being. But hopefully it does improve and take things further than that and become something very, very special over time. But in the meantime, Lords of Solgrund is a project that's uh, release date is to be determined. And then moving on to 4Xs, but one more pixel art game, which uh, I think is the best execution of pixel art in gaming so far. It's Songs of Conquest by Lava Potion. This is a Heroes of Might and Magic inspired game where adventure awaits. Lead a powerful magician called Wielders and venture to lands unknown. Wage battles against armies who dare oppose you and hunt for powerful artifacts. Build an empire and various towns with four factions. The Arleon, Baria, Rana and the Barony of Loth, which aren't your typical factions. I mean, there is various human alignments, I guess, with across these factions. There's a lizard folk and an undead race, but they're not really what you would expect, which is nice. It's not just doing the typical thing. 
This is a single player and multiplayer game. It's also promising an in-game level editor and what's called a choral campaign where you can listen to bards as they celebrate your path to victory. Each campaign is a unique song that tells your tale of your rise and ruin, uh, hence the name Songs of Conquest. Now, the big thing that really set this apart is this whole pixel art style, which some people don't like, but it really made waves and a lot of people are really excited about it. It was even labeled one of the best looking games at E3. So although it's not to everyone's tastes, personally, as I've mentioned, pixel art is my thing and I love the way it looks. The gameplay trailers so far look really nice and it's looking for a full release in quarter one of 2022. So hopefully it's not too long before we can play this game. Now I did mention this is Heroes of Might and Magic sort of inspired. It is classic turn-based strategy adventure with RPG elements. So your heroes have inventories and think if you are a fan of the older Heroes of Might and Magic, this is something that you're gonna want, definitely wanna be jumping into. So I'm for sure looking forward to Songs of Conquest. Continuing with the four X's, we have BOC by Code Arts. BOC is a realistic historical turn-based strategy game with actual planets, climate simulation, and a non-linear progression. Develop your own civilization and culture to rule the ancient world, starting as a nomad tribe from the last ice age. The main features here are a vast world to build in, the global scale going from uh, micro maps from 8x8 up to 768x640, which is apparently more than 491,000 hexagonal tiles. The progression system gives complete freedom in how to expand and progress your civilization, akin to some RPG non linear progression paths, and the worlds are supposed to be realistic in terms of terrain and geography as well as the amount of sunlight, temperature, and weather. Speaking of weather, there's climate simulation and dynamic environments. And generally the whole feel of this is that you're supposed to be able to feel that you have a giant army, not pieces on a board game. Now that all sounds really good, but the development of this game has been interrupted for various reasons over the years, but it seems to be coming on strong now. Going into early access quarter one of 2022 on Steam with a plan of being around a year and a half to completion. So starting early in 2022, we can expect a later 2023 full release for BOC. And although it might look a little rough at first glance, it does seem to be introducing more and more features as time goes on. So we'll see how it goes through early access and whether it can really shape up with that global scale it's talking about. On a more 2D scale, we've got Rising Lords by Argonwood. This is a medieval turn-based strategy game with card and board game elements. Send your serfs to fight and die in your name, or let them prosper. <laughs> Who's gonna do that? And use them to your advantage. Ah, that, that makes sense. Collect taxes and resources, dictate rations and field work, forge weapons, reshape the battlefield, raise armies, and build mighty fortified cities. Helping your people to become knights or dump them on a battlefield far, far away. But be careful, even the most humble peasants will revolt eventually, because they're revolting. Key features in gameplay are finding the perfect balance, juggling your production, resource gathering, diplomacy and treason, taxes and rations, all important. There's a big promise of deep tactics, using troop types to counter, taking into account morale, terrain, and special cards to get the upper hand. There's up to four player simultaneous multiplayer, and the psychology of war, you, know, you could play some mind games by spreading some false information and using your figures to pester your opponents. Your leader can be customized for look and skills, and you can craft your perfect cities and troops as well. So there's a lot here in terms of uh, developing your own playstyle and preferences. And this is now in early access since uh, roughly the middle of 2020 with an okay amount of mostly positive reviews on Steam. So this one 
is picking up a little bit slowly, but for those who have tried it, they do seem to like it. The plan is to be in early access until the middle of 2022, so we're looking at a few more months until a 1.0 complete version. And although visually this might look a bit more simplistic, I think gameplay-wise there's quite a lot of depth and strategy and tactics that can be employed. So if you like the look of it or you just like the sound of the gameplay, you can check out Rising Lords right now, or you could wait until the middle of 2022 when it should be fully released. Okay, now here's a strategy game that's gonna be a bit of a throwback to some people. It's Fata Deum by 42 Bits Entertainment. Now, once you see this, at first glance, you're immediately gonna think of black and white. It's been a long time since we've seen something like black and white god games and strategy games combined. And this one is inspired by the god games of old. Fata Deum lets you mold settlements and your townsfolk in your image. Questioning, will you raise the settlements to splendor or spur them on to violent debauchery and demons? Watch as a beautiful living world grows under your whims. So just like black and white, you could be good or be very bad. You know, convincing people to come to your side or just conquer them. Frightening your people or fostering good behavior and shaping a living world as you see fit. There's also a story to go through as you are a young god rising to glory in a campaign mode, offering curious and revealing challenges set to an engaging narrative. I mean, this all sounds great. If you've played black and white and you've been, you've been wanting a new black and white for so, so long, so I have definitely been like that. And it is planning to go into early access at the start of 2022 and staying in early access for, uh, it says, approximately nine months, which means this should go into early access and release in 2022. The full version is promising a lot more balancing, better AI, some graphics improvements and animation stuff as well. And overall, this is looking like a god slash strategy game that's going to be great in competitive multiplayer and through the campaign. But one concern I would have with any kind of god game like this is personality. You can't just have a pile of mechanics and have it be cool. The reason why Black and White was so successful is because it had quirkiness. In, like intri intriguing characters and unique takes on things and funny lines and you know serious stuff as well so hopefully Fata Deum is more than just a pile of strategy and god game mechanics and it's actually got personality to it but visually just from the start it seems like it's going out going very well it looks great so hopefully it plays great as well in 2022 now, more into the fantasy RTS, we have Immortal Gates of Pyre by Sunspear Games. Become godlike. This is a free-to-play battle strategy game where players act as godlike generals, leading massive armies to destroy each other's bases. Each immortal represents a proud and powerful nation vying for dominance, not just through their soldiers, but through their divinely powered spells and abilities. There's a number of factions to choose from. There's the Angelic Empire Kurath, the Root Witches Aru, and the Iron Republic of Jora. And at first glance, this looks to be a classic sort of RTS, sci-fi, fantasy. Units running around, bases being built and destroyed with hero units. So obviously there's going to be some influence from RTSs of old. I think particularly it does remind me of Warcraft 3. And even the visual style, actually, looking at it now, it, it kind of just looks like Dota. For a gameplay overview, you begin with an outpost and six workers on a sprawling map filled with untapped resources against one or two opponents. You build your economy, rally your armies, and claim territory. So it does seem like this is an RTS as we know it. Scouting, defending, attacking. But uh, it has to be said that not too, too much has been properly revealed. We've seen some clips of gameplay and stuff like that. It looks nice. Uh, it seems to play as an RTS, uh, but it, it's probably got a long ways to go at this point. So we can keep an eye on Immortal Gates of Pyre, and hopefully we get a clearer picture of everything put together over the next year.
Staying in RDS, uh, but more Viking and less fantasy, it's Frozenheim by Paranoid Interactive. Here we have a serene Norse city builder thing with elaborate management gameplay and RTS tactical combat. Lead your Viking clan through the hardships of the frozen north, season by season, year after year. Building, surviving, setting sail to explore and conquer, and winning Odin's favor to secure your place in Valhalla. Here's a game which I have tried out a little bit in its early state, and it, first of all, visually, it looks really good. You know, it's a base builder, almost a city builder, but it is fully a strategy game. You do have to build up houses, maintain your resources, survive the elements. And there is a campaign mode with a story to go through. Though in the earlier states, the game felt a little bit clunky to play, especially with unit management and unit controls. It wasn't too bad, but it, it was a bit awkward. But it's been in early access since about mid-2021 and it's gotten quite a good number of mostly positive reviews on Steam. And development has been continuing with a number of updates for units, unit controls, pathfinding and all of that. So it's, it's coming along well. The plan is to be in early access until the beginning of 2022. And in early access it has free play and multiplayer, though the full release is promising a full single player campaign. So it shouldn't be too long from now until we get a full release of Frozenheim. And if things continue as they are in development, I think we're gonna get something at least relatively good. And hopefully better early next year. Continuing deeper into historical RTSs, there's War Selection by Glyph Worlds. Here we have a compelling RTS game featuring base building, resource extraction and warfare. Evolve from a Stone Age tribe to a distinct industrial nation with unique game mechanics and battle for supremacy with dozens of players on a unique procedurally generated map. There's a number of game modes here. Survival, a mode where you need to survive against hordes of enemies. As we know from this list, that's pretty popular. A free-for-all ranked 1v1 competitive multiplayer, team matches, and Armageddon, which is a battle royale flavored mode where players with the least amount of territory are bombarded by meteors until one player remains. Looking at it, this is a historical RTS, so though going through so many eras, it's more reminiscent of maybe Empire Earth or Rise of Nations, which is a game that people have been missing. And this one is going pretty well. It's been in early access on Steam since uh, later in 2019, so it's been a few years, but with thousands of very positive reviews. So people are really liking War Selection so far. Now, it does say that the game will be immediately released properly as soon as the storyline campaign is ready. So basically, multiplayer and all those other game modes are going well. There's, there's even more competitive multiplayer maps coming out and everything. Updates are pretty regular. But there's no clear indication of when the storyline campaign will be ready or completed. But if you're not too concerned about that, then you can jump in right now, as war selection seems to be shaping up very nicely. And then for one of the most hyped strategy builders that we've seen in a long time, it is Mana Lords by Slavic Magic. Mana Lords is an upcoming strategy game that combines deep organic and realistic city building with large scale tactical battles handcrafted by a solo developer. This dev is trying to give the RTS builder genre a fresh spin. Organic city building with gridless placement and rotation, but with snapping tools to keep things organized, you'll be building medieval towns and setting up trade routes that form to the landscape. Historical realism is very important to this game. Much of the elements are inspired by actual historical references of 11th to 15th century Europe. And attention to detail is key. As you can see, just visually, uh, it, it looks amazing. And all the little details, it's, it's really coming together. The large scale battles, I've been keeping an eye on how these have been shaping up. And it's, it's got, oh, it, it just, it looks really good how the units clash into each other and everything. The battles feel real, large scale, 
and your soldiers have morale. Flanking is important, there's fatigue and even weather effects come into play. And of course, troop positioning. And outside of infantry, there will be cavalry, fortifications, units on walls, gunpowder and siege engines, trebuchets included, and so much is being promised. This game even uses motion capture and photogrammetry to keep things looking even better. So this dev is promising a lot and seemingly delivering a lot. And the only sad thing is I've not been able to play this game because it's not available yet. Not even in early access, which it will be releasing into and staying in early access between one to two years with regular content updates. When it does finally enter early access, it will already have the city building and management gameplay, AI opponents and diplomacy, one large map with more than 50 regions to conquer and infantry battles. The rest of it will be developed over the coming year or two. So a lot of people are looking forward to Mana Lords, myself included, and hopefully we get some kind of playable version in 2022. But you know, as a solo dev doing a project on this scale, it, it, there's no promises for timeline. We, we can just hope for the best. Shifting eras into the modern age, we've got Global Conflagration by Midwood. Set in the near future, Global Conflagration is a classic RTS that will take players on a massive European conquest. Build your base, train units, deploy measures, and call in airstrikes to destroy your opponents. Games like this always seem very much inspired by the Command & Conquer series, and this one is promising a campaign that will explore an unexpected military incursion into Europe, as well as offline skirmish and multiplayer modes. It does have traditional base building, infantry squads, which are I think quite popular nowadays, squad based units, it's becoming more and more common, a balanced and unique set of land units for each faction, aircrafts and helicopters, and deployable measures to support your units. Now there's no particular timing of when this will release, but it is planning to go into early access for at least two years. So we're looking at a 2023 full release at the very minimum, but through 2022 we should get something playable. And the final version will include a fully voiced campaign, two playable asymmetrical factions, a dozen new maps, and various other improvements as the game goes on. Visually, it looks pretty good. It's got that realistic modern RTS style to it, but games like this are gonna have quite a lot of competition. You know, this isn't the only game like this. So let's move on from global conflagration and see what else this subgenre has in store. Here's a big one, Company of Heroes 3 by Relic Entertainment. Bigger and better than ever, Company of Heroes 3 combines heart-pounding combat with deeper strategic choices in a stunning Mediterranean theater of war. Every battle tells a story, what's yours? This game is offering up tactical gameplay, making use of daring flanking moves and exposing enemy side armor. And you know, I've more recently tried out the older Company of Heroes for the first time and that game holds up. but. This is a series that has a lot of expectations, and it's going to be hard to, to meet those. This time what it's trying to do to set itself apart is offering new layers of strategy in a new dynamic campaign map, which is said to have sandbox style gameplay, allowing players to command the overall war effort and experience more strategic choices, including launching air and naval strikes. There's supposed to be diverse factions and units, including a varied cast of specialist units and elite squads, including the American Canadian Special Service Forces and the Gurkhas from the Commonwealth. And as it did mention story, this is going for cinematic action. So it's supposed to look good and tell these great stories, which is a big challenge. You can't just throw up any old story into these games because you really want to connect with these characters and connect with these stories. And one thing I got from playing the older Company of Heroes is that it was almost like watching a movie. It, it, it had these deep, intriguing stories and you just kind of wanted to keep going, even just for the story's sake alone. But it can't just all be story, you gotta have that good gameplay. And Company of Heroes 3 had sort of an open beta test in 2021 and it got a lot of feedback. And I'll assume they're taking all that feedback on board because 
This is a series that has been dormant for quite a few years, almost a decade I think, and it's gonna be tough living up to the expectations of old classics and favorites. But uh, at first glance, things seem to be doing well, and we can hope once Company of Heroes 3 properly releases, we'll get something that's amazing. Hopefully, please. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Okay, now for another modern RTS, uh, which we haven't seen much, but the developers are interesting. It's Crossfire Legion by Smilegate and Blackbird Interactive. This is supposed to be a return to the classic RTS with a modern day look and feel. And we've seen some screenshots and a logo of uh, something that seems very promising, but no actual gameplay footage. Now, the main key interesting thing here is they've brought on Blackbird Interactive as developers. Which, if you didn't know, Blackbird Interactive are the Homeworld 3 developers. So they've already got a lot on their plate and now they're helping out with something else. But despite not having any gameplay footage or trailers released yet, there is supposed to be a launch window of 2022. So it, it's not a lot of time from the announcement of Crossfire Legion to its supposed release. This of course could be delayed to be later on or anything like that, but since the screenshots themselves look really good, I thought I should show them off here. But really there isn't much to say, so we'll just wait and see how Crossfire Legion shapes up. Because with a target release date of 2022, well, they'll probably show off something early in the year. And going into Grand Strategies, now for a game that many have been waiting for for a long time, Victoria 3 by Paradox Development Studio. The last game, Victoria 2, was over a decade ago, so this one's been a long time coming. And now Paradox invites you to build your ideal society in the tumult and exciting and transformative 19th century balancing the competing interests in your society and earning your place in the sun. This one is calling itself the Ultimate Society Simulator, as you lead dozens of world nations from 1836 to 1936, agrarian or industrial, traditional or radical, peaceful or expansionist. The choice is yours. Population groups are detailed with their own economic needs and political desires, and you'll be reforming your government and constitution to take advantage of new social innovations, while preserving the stability of your nation by holding fast to tradition in the face of revolutionaries. You'll also be researching new technologies and ideas to improve your national situation. There's also supposed to be a deep economic system, where you can expand your industry and take advantage of lucrative goods and taxes, importing cheap raw materials and selling off finished goods, and securing vital resources for yourself to fuel and advance your economy. All this on a grand stage, where you'll have to use your diplomatic wiles to weave a tangled global web of pacts, relations, alliances, and rivalries, using threats and military prowess, and maybe just lies, to persuade enemies to, to do what you want them to do. So this one is a lot. And it's Victoria 3, which I know, even myself not being hugely experienced with the Paradox Grand Strategies, that many people have been asking for Victoria 3 for years. And there's a little bit shown off. We've got some screenshots, we've got a nice cinematic trailer, and there seems to be basically what people want on the way. But you never know with these games, and usually you know, right at the start, these games can be a little buggy, rather unbalanced, and it being Paradox, expect a ton of DLC to come out for this game. You're not going to get a finished game right from day one. They're going to expect you to buy into more stuff. There's no official release date for this. It is just uh, to be announced, and I don't think they're going to want to wait too long with this announcement. So I would predict and guess a 2022 release date, but you never really know. But when it does release, if you've been waiting for this, it'll be time to jump on your Zeppelin and fly across the world of Victoria 3. Continuing with grand strategies, but going up to space, we have Galactic Civilizations 4 by Stardock Entertainment. 
Explore the galaxy, meet new civilizations, colonize new worlds, discover new technologies, recruit and mentor citizens, shape your government, choose your destiny, all through an adventure that goes through a rich and ancient galaxy. This game is basically trying to bring it a step up from the last Gal Civ and compete with a kind of mix between Stellaris and Civilization. And currently it's in what they're calling Alpha Access, which means it's on the Epic Games Store in Early Access since about the middle of 2021 saying that it will provide warfare, planetary conquest, cultural domination, political alliances, technological supremacy, and various other ways for you to dominate this galaxy in multiplayer or single player. It generally looks great and all the features sound good, though it being an early access on the Epic Games Store generally means it's not ready, but uh, we can expect this to come to Steam once it releases of exits early access or just within a year because that's how the epic game store usually does exclusivity deals it's like a one year thing if you didn't know it's a one year thing and then you can release the game on whatever you want now besides the expected core features of a galactic civilizations game which is turn-based tile-based ship designing strong ai for opponents and player controlled evolution of your galactic civilization some key points with this one is a new combat system where now once the forces get big enough a turn of combat may not destroy all in a fleet it won't resolve a, a whole battle in a single turn which allows for players to alter tactics retreat or call in reinforcements and multiplayer is enhanced where it's not just a single player game with other people there uh, they're planning to include support for co-op as well as scenarios where games could be won in less than an hour, so not every multiplayer game will go on forever. And as a quick overview, leader characters, story-driven missions, mixed populations, and one key change is true colonies, where you don't have to manage every single planet. The colonies you set up all feed tech, minerals, wealth, and food to the nearest core world, which you do manage, and you can set up true colonies like that, which they say in hindsight is much better rather than having to micromanage every single planet you're on. It'll be easier to manage and not so tedious. There's, there's basically a lot here if you want to look it up. So we could go on for an hour about Galactic Civilizations 4, but otherwise you can check it out now on the Epic Store or wait for it to come out of Early Access, which they do hopefully plan to be in 2022, but it does say depending how well early access goes. Staying up in space, we've got Distant Worlds 2 by Code Force. Here is a vast, pausable, real-time 4x space strategy game where you have to choose your side as you customize everything, it says, where you can tailor the game to your preferred playstyle and scale, you can decide how much you want to control in terms of which gameplay area suits you best and let your advisors and the intelligent automation handle everything you don't want to handle. Galaxies are meant to be huge with up to 2000 star systems and tens of thousands of planets, moons and asteroids that are there for you to explore and exploit, whether peacefully through mining and diplomacy or by conquest. The complex process of generating these galaxies will mean that it's new every time you play. And it is also promoting the ability to build your own. A built-in game editor allows you to fine-tune your own galaxy, adding or removing star systems, planets, asteroids, ships, star bases, space monsters, and everything else. So you can handcraft your perfect galaxy or get some interesting ones built by the community. Now the first game in the series was critically acclaimed and a lot of people have been expecting this one for a while and hoping that it turns out really well. And I do like their point on playing how you want to play where you can control what you want to control and not control the rest because these games can get very complicated with micro and tedium. So hopefully the automated controls are good so that you can actually let things slide 
when the automated systems take over and it doesn't ruin your game. That's going to be very important for this game. And generally, it's shaping up quite nicely. We've seen a good amount of gameplay, although still a little rough in development. And I think fans of the first game will be into this one, though we'll find out when it does actually release, which currently is unclear. Doesn't seem like any early access is planned, just the full release, but the release date is coming soon. So we'll see what Distant Worlds 2 has in store sometime on the horizon. Still in space, it's a Fragile Existence by Fragile Continuum. Take command of the last surviving fleet of humankind. In a sci-fi RTS with fully 3D planet surfaces and vast solar systems to explore. Dispatch expeditions to find resources, build settlements, construct vital parts and supplies, and evolve your technology to meet new threats. Here you play a fleet commander, taking command of the fleet as you direct the course from system to system exploring these worlds. What really does set this game apart in these Space 4 X's is that the planets are actually planets. They have surfaces with things on them, and not many space strategy games go that far. You'll be managing physicalized resources and personnel, because you can't just fit everything, with modular components, docked units, passenger crew, and numerous resources, each vying for unit volume and space. So you can't just keep carrying everything with you from system to system. There are also ground bases that you can build and set up to gather vital resources, kind of similar in a manner of traditional RTS titles, with engineer units placing foundations and awaiting delivery of the required materials for the buildings. But the clock is ticking. Sooner or later, the enemy fleet will find you, and you'll have to fight and move on, basically. So what this actually kind of sounds like is a 4X RTS space game that combines the plot of FTL, where you're constantly on the move and warping from system to system to escape the enemy, which is actually kind of interesting because you, you have to build up and then abandon what you've built, carrying what's important with you. So I actually really like that idea. And hence the name, Fragile Existence, as you're always teetering on the edge of death. One bonus point is it does promise modding support. So if uh, this game does take off, there will be a lot of extra features and changes made by the community. But we'll see how this all comes together in 2022, which is when Fragile Existence is planning a release. And now for the final game on this list, it is Homeworld 3 by Blackbird Interactive. This is a game that we've been we've been waiting for, and the estimated delivery finally is on the way. Quarter 4 of 2022. I mean, when it's whenever they say quarter 4, I always expect it to be pushed into the following year, but Homeworld 3 it's, it, it's Homeworld. People have been waiting for a new proper Homeworld game for so, so long, particularly in the RTS scene. And it's been a long time since Deserts of Karak, which had a rough start, but it, it turned out okay over time. Homeworld 3 d is published by Gearbox Publishing, but they did a FIG crowdfunding campaign anyway for... I suppose an early access look backers rewards thing and they did raise 1.5 million dollars there but to be fair they did just set it at a one dollar goal because funding was included anyway i suppose they just sort of set it up as a kind of roundabout way for pre-orders and so, I, I know the, the whole crowdfunding for fully funded games is still a bit weird to me but Homeworld is Homeworld. They haven't really shown off much yet still. I think they're keeping a lot under wraps so that when it actually comes to release, it's going to be surprising and amazing. Even the question of when is Homeworld 3 set is answered with, we're not ready to give out too many spoilers for the plot, but the game will take place at some point after Homeworld 2. So it's not a prequel, it is a sequel, <laughs> but uh, we, we basically don't know much. The trailer's cool, and they got some nice screenshots, I think, but it, it's, I mean, we just don't know all that much about Homeworld 3. But it's a year to release if they're sticking to schedule, and it better be good, otherwise people are going to be very unhappy. <laughs> because, you know, this is another 
classic RTS series. And you, you can't, you can't mess it up. You can't. Anyway, that's pretty much it for Homeworld 3. Uh, hopefully I don't cover this in next year's list because the game would have released. Alright, now for a bunch of bonus games, but if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed your time here. And it would be greatly appreciated if you could like, subscribe, share this video, and ring that bell, as it really does help keep this channel running. Head over to gamersact.com slash listhub to vote on your favorite game from the list and for bonus stuff. Also, you can support more directly by using the Humble Bundle or Nexus referral links to buy games, perusing my gaming merch stores where I design my own products, or checking out the Patreon to really help keep the lights on. All linked down below along with the Discord community, Twitch live streams, and my Twitter where I'm active and contactable. Now for those bonus games, 10 of them, starting with Thistle. This is a pixel art RTS, which looks very nice, but the Kickstarter has not yet begun. So it's a long way to go for Thistle, but it's something pretty interesting considering the other pixel art games we've seen on this list. Then there's Fanstratix. This is supposed to be a spiritual successor from the lead game designer of Heroes of Might and Magic 3. But nothing has been revealed yet, so it might be something really interesting in a year or two if it gets made at all. Then I'm gonna have a mention of the Settlers. We have listed the Settlers for many years now, and it's been indefinitely delayed, but it's still not officially cancelled, but also there's no solid news about any kind of release. So this might be out next year, it might be out five years from now, it's hard to tell. But once news comes out, then, well, if you're interested, you can catch up on that. And then there's Lords and Peasants, a game we've listed a number of times. Updates are still regularly being shown off on the Twitter account, but that's about it. No proper news of a early access release or release of any kind, so we'll keep an eye on this one. Meanwhile, Zero AD is still going as a kind of an open source indie Age of Empires, and it just entered Alpha 25. So, obviously a project like this doesn't have any particular strict schedules, so, you know, after so many alphas, then there's gonna be a whole beta, I assume. But it's, it's actually very interesting, it's playable, and you can check it out. A note on Age of Mythology. This, ha apparently, as stated by the developers, has not been forgotten, but nothing has been confirmed either. Maybe a remaster? A remake? A sequel? We'll probably find out something in the year coming up after Age of Empires 4 releases, so maybe there'll be some news in 2022, but we can only hope. And then there's Commanding Nations. This is a modern era base building RTS that does seem to have some promise, but it's another one where the Kickstarter is yet to run. So it, it could be one to watch for now, and we'll see if the Kickstarter, once it launches, hits its targets. And then an intriguing announcement for Stargate Timekeepers, supposed to be an RTS set in the Stargate universe, which is unexpected, but it's just a cinematic trailer for now, with chevrons being locked. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see what they actually reveal for that one. And then there's Ephemeris. It's a 4X sci-fi game with the emphasis on realistic space combat, but it still seems really rough and early in development. So it's probably got a number of years to go before this actually releases properly anyway. And for a final mention, the ex-Blizzard devs from the strategy department have moved over to their new studio, Frost Giant Studios, and they've apparently raised $4.7 million for a new RTS, which is unannounced, but could be, hopefully, something really, really good. But they haven't actually said what it is yet, so we'll have to wait and see. And that's 30 plus upcoming strategy games that should be releasing through 2022 and some into 2023 depending on their developments. Which ones are you most interested in? Oh, so here's something I'd like to know. Do you think strategy games are back to being good? We always talk about how nothing beats the 90s golden age of strategy games, but it's been a pretty strong showing for the genre these past few years. Some really notable titles coming out. 
mostly in the 4x grand strategy scene, but even some decent RTSs. So what do you think? Meanwhile, if you'd like to see more upcoming games, this is only one of many lists. So drop by the other upcoming games list videos for so much more. Or you could just watch some of my strategy playthroughs of Age of Empires, Civilization, Humankind, and all that good stuff. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. And I'll see you in the next video.